to 90.3 KEXP. My name is Troy Nelson in the KEXP live room here where we also stream 24 hours a day, seven days a week at KEXP.org. Yes, I'm Troy Nelson and the other day somebody said to me, hey, do you want to interview Iguana Death Cult on Sunday? And to that I said, hell yes. And that is why we are here today. And Iguana Death Cult, if you're ready, let's do this.
Awesome. You're listening to Iguana Death Cult live here on KEXP. I'm a 
I mean, I knew it was going to be good, but that was fantastic. You lit the place up. Thanks a lot, man. I got to take my jacket off. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, there's so much going on. All this auxiliary percussion, shakers, keyboards, uh, pedals galore, and then all of a sudden, a trombone comes out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This <laughs> I love this. Uh, once again, Iguana Death Cult live here in the KEXP live room all the way from Netherlands. And uh, I've been very excited about this day. So thank you for taking the time to do this. Thanks for having us. We're very excited as well. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And uh, like I said, I, I was expecting it to be awesome, but it, it, was, uh, it was more than that. That was uh, so much fun. And I just had some questions for you about like the history of the band. And I'm very curious. Uh, Going all the way back to uh, the beginnings of this band and uh, knowing each other at such a young age, I'm curious, how many times do you really think that you played the riff of Seven Nation Army? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, there must be over a thousand times, yeah. <laughs> like we, we started out like I was still on the bass then and started out in his parents' garage, just had smoke on the water and... Uh, Seven Nation Army, and I just switched strings, so I, do, I would do it on the E, mm -hmm. then I would do it on the A, and we would look at each other like, yeah, man, we got, got something it. going on. I remember that feeling <laughs> Maybe when I was smell. learning how to play guitar. I'm a little older, so for me it was like like Metallica's One or something. I remember when I first did the first boom, 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 <laughs> and I was like, whoa. It's like you figured out a magic trick. Yeah, yeah, Seven yeah, Nation exactly. Army would be the perfect song to start learning on guitar. Oh, yeah, the we still like to play it yeah. every now and then. That's awesome. Well, also, I was curious, uh, how influential was the song Monkey Man by the Specials to you? Well, pretty influential in, 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 in the sense that, like, when I was about seven years old, my CD player broke, and my mom got me, uh, got me her old uh, record player, and she, she showed me the, the Specials record and uh, I especially loved the the monkey man tune and I was I remember dancing to it with my mother in my be uh, bedroom uh, at a very young age so uh, I think that kind of hit the switch like um, what I like like in music to to make uh, something that is kind of rowdy kind of fun mm -hmm. like uh, yeah Getting a party started. I, I love know. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Uh, a couple years ago, you were all interviewed in a hot tub, <laughs> and uh, it's a <laughs> it's a great setting for an interview. And the interviewer asked if you had any goals. And in the interview, you said that you really already achieved all your goals, and now everything else is just extra. Do you still find that to be true, or have mm -hmm. any new goals come to the surface? Well. I think we were lying at the time because we haven't played quite, uh, quite KXP yet. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't played the, the stage yet. So well, I quite like it there. So uh, <laughs> yeah. let's up the antis a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but new goals. Yeah, we had to be home at the time probably. Mm -hmm. I think it was like COVID time or right, right before that. So yeah. we didn't have anything going on. What are our goals, Tobias? Um, try to not... To try to survive this tour. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go completely broke. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> tough. I know it's tough out there. Uh, let's see. What can you tell the listeners who may or may not be familiar? And I wasn't. You introduced me to it. But the band Balagon? Yeah. What, what do you want to what, know about Balagon? What, that, what can you tell somebody like me that's not familiar? What is oh, Balagon? Okay. Like? That's, that's a band of a friend of ours, Uri. Uh, who's uh, from Tel Aviv, he lives in Berlin now, and yeah, we play with them a lot. He's in Brian Jonestown at the moment, he's oh, a drummer, yeah. That's so cool. He went and do great stuff. <laughs> that's <laughs> went awesome. Went and did great stuff, and uh, yeah, we played a couple of times, so then it's a cool band. Cool. Yeah. And speaking of some other artists, uh, I would like to name a few more artists, and let me know your thoughts about them when you hear me say their name. I'm just going to mention some artists and let me know how you, or anyone, chime in or how you feel about them. But these are artists that I wasn't familiar with that you've introduced me to through some old interviews. A uh, library card? Yeah. Tobis? So they're friends of ours, um, and they make great music. Mm -hmm. They're like one of the cool underground bands from Rotterdam. Cool. And then medium, medium. You didn't know medium, medium. I didn't know medium, medium. Oh, that's, uh, th I, I'm gonna take, uh, give this one to Ari. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, all the stuff that we like in one band. Yeah, really <laughs> groovy. A lot of percussion. Yeah, really cool band. Pretty Horns. raw as well, I would say. Awesome. Not too polished. Um, who is smudged? Smudged. Smudged are also good friends of ours from uh, Rotterdam. 
Um, they make uh, crazy psychedelic uh, crowd rock music. Uh, they have a habit of painting their faces green. Uh, they're very, they, they do a very good live show. And uh, yeah, cool. Definitely recommend. And also, I was curious uh, who, who is Trauma House? Drumhouse, also a great band from Rotterdam. We got a lot of great bands uh, in Rotterdam lately. Yes. It's a b- big scene. It's actually a very nice growing scene with a lot of love. We all, like there's no competition. We, we all are friends of each other and uh, it's nice. So Drumhouse is, uh, is a really cool post-punk band uh, from Rotterdam who are going... Mm-hmm. Yeah, also doing pretty well. Cool. I like to do this in interviews so that people that watch it from all over the world, they also learn about your scene. And yeah. uh, and so thank you for, for sharing that. I was also curious what the album Orgy in Rhythm that you love so much, what is it about that album you love so much? Uh, the, the complete chaos and... Uh yeah, I don't know. I got a kind of a wired brain sometimes. It's very chaotic. And somehow, like, when I listen to something chaotic like that, it's like a minus and minus make a positive, two negatives make a, make a positive, mm-hmm. I get kind of relaxed and, and very inspired. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, loving this new album, Echo Palace. It's fantastic. And I was also curious, how did you get saxophone legend Benjamin Herman to be on the record? Yeah, we, we we are still uh, kind of surprised by that, uh, but uh, yeah, we were in the studio that he records in also, in Rotterdam, and um, we were working on this song, Sensory Overload, and we liked it, but it missed something, and we were playing around it, and someone said, as a joke, like, maybe we should bay him in, him on, like, just go wild on this song, and then the producer, he, Marcel, he said, well, I can... I can call him and ask him if he wants to do it, wants to do it. And uh, he was uh, very, uh, very stoked yeah. to be on the record. And he, he ended up doing three songs on the I record. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. He's, he did multiple songs on yes. the record, played yeah. on multiple songs. That's awesome. And speaking of the studio in Rotterdam, what is PAF? Is it pronounced PAF Studio? Puff. Puff? Puff. Puff Studios? Yeah. What, what, can you tell me more about that place? Uh, it's, cool. it's a cool spot. It was... Um, it was uh, uh, opened by um, Marcel Fuckers and uh, Dave van Raven, who is a, a f- pretty famous guy in Holland. He does a lot of 60s music, but in Dutch. And uh, you can see it by, in the studio, because when you walk in, in the studio, it's like stepping into the 60s. Mm, cool. It's really nice. Got this uh, old bar and uh, like red, fe- car- red carpet and stuff. And uh, mm. they got a lot of cool gear there. And uh, yeah. So it's a nice place to record. Awesome. For the yeah. first time, like stuff from the seventies wasn't even allowed to get in there. You know, <laughs> like, oh, Ro- Ronan Space Echo. Now it's from the seventies. Yeah. Bring oh, it the seventies was too new. Yeah, it was too yeah. new. Yeah. <laughs> but they changed it <laughs> they up. They changed their mind. They yeah. even have uh, some eighty cents in there now. Do yeah. they have like a reel to reel like tape machine? So, like, so they like have two inch tape. What's really cool is they have like a I think like a three meter high or like 10 feet high plate reverb on top of their building. Wow. Which is really nice, yeah. They had to get like a, like a crane to get it on there. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Okay, so it was all analog. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, no, not, no. They also use modern technologies. Right. And they just have all that. Yeah, also. yeah, yeah. To play around with. To That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Well, once again, Iguana Death Cult. Uh, been loving this new album and uh, all your music throughout the years. And also, you make really good music videos. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. Who's the guy dressed up in the, like, sort of, he looks like a knight? And he's got, like, the. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's our big friend, Max. Max. Uh, also from Rotterdam, he's also a big uh, key figure in the in the music scene. Um, he does tour managing. He has no spray bookings. Uh, he does that together with the guy from Trum House. They they promote a lot of cool shit in the in the city. All the all the cool bands play them there. Awesome little showcase. So. Uh, I, I yeah. feel like now, after this interview, I need to go to Rotterdam. You need to come. Actually, come in October because we have our own little South by Southwest. It's really? called Left of the Dial. Cool. And the whole city is, is filled with bands. There are bands on boats, bands in theaters, wow. bands on the street. It's really nice. That's amazing. Yeah, it's cool. Okay, aside from that festival, if I were to say, I've never been to Rotterdam, where should I go? Where, where would you tell me to go? Come over to my place. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll show you around. Yes. Yeah. You'll be my tour guide? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm 
pretty serious about this. I, I want to come. It looks, cool. after researching you all, and uh, Rotterdam just seems awesome. So once again, thank you all for taking the time to do this. And it was a pleasure to have you, and uh, we would love to have you back soon. It would be a pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> awesome. Thank you once again. That is Iguana Death Call live here on KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.